And we're live. Welcome, everybody, to the Friday Google Ads presentation. Uh, I'm just going to change the title each time we come here. So now it's called the Google Ads presentation. Uh, we call this, I think, knowledge bombs, brain transfers. I don't know. Pick and choose. We talk about Google stuff, ads specifically. Actually not. Today we're going to be talking about Google Search Council. Hey, Caden, you're here. What's up, man? Uh, so I have a few guests that are joining me today. Um, account managers, strategists. I don't know. We're all good at Google Ads, and we all work at Solutions 8. So... Uh, Caden is one of our strategists. FA is one of our strategists. Yusuf is also a strategist. We're all just, you know, people that think about Google stuff. Uh, I don't know what we, the titles don't matter and traffic is a thing. So let's begin. <clears throat> so today we're going to be talking about Search Console. Search Console is actually um, one of the lesser, uh, kind of like least favorite children of Google Ads. <laughs> it's like, you know, one that's not really looked at or, or thought of that much. It's kind of an afterthought, typically because Search Console is usually more for organic traffic. But there are a lot of things in Google Search Console, a lot of tips and tricks and things that you can use to kind of discuss with clients the reasons why um, you know, brand awareness is actually increasing, but your organic traffic isn't due to your, your top of funnel, middle of funnel, or even bottom of funnel cold traffic direct response strategies that you're running in Google Ads. Even things like Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, all the good stuff. Uh, TV. I mean, you're talking about streaming on, on you know Hulu, for example. All those things will have an effect on your Google Search Console, but your ads specifically on Google will increase or decrease the amount of traffic that you're going to see in the organic channel when you're looking at things like GA4 or UA. No, UA is, I think, now extended till like July is when they said that they're now going to keep UA on, which is pretty cool. I think Google started to, started to see how bad GA4 was. Um, even if you're not lazy and you said a proper way, it's still pretty terrible. But um, today, we're going to demystify a bit your organic channel um, inside of Google. We're also going to be talking about how to actually identify real market lift um, from your top of funnel strategies. So <clears throat> I think we have like, you know, a few people have joined already, which is pretty cool. Um, and I don't see any chats. Usually I see chats come in. So if you could, if you could see us, if you could chat, that'd be cool. I just want to double check that this is working. Um, make sure that we can kind of see everything that's coming in. I think we have like 20 people here so far. So uh, hopefully... It's working. I don't see any chats. Usually there's like, hey, Steve, thank you. Uh, you guys look great. I appreciate it. I'm sure you're probably talking about everybody but me, Steve, but I have, this is the thought that counts. So I appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, let's, let's begin. I'm going to pull up an analytics account, and I'm going to sort of discuss. <clears throat> uh, I see Turkish faces makes me proud. Yeah. <laughs> we got Turkey represented here by F.A. and Yusuf. Uh, Curtis is ready to learn. Decaz is great to see you guys. <laughs> uh, this is all good stuff. So, um, yeah, it's Google Search Console. It's it's a it's a great great tool, and hopefully, we'll kind of all discuss you know how the relationship is with analytics, how it is with ads, um, some things you can look at from an organic lift, and also some things that you can look at from a if you're just starting off in Google, but you have a company, you have you know, people that come to your site <clears throat> and and look at uh, certain products or or even lead generation, all that is going to be affected by uh, the strategies that we're going to be talking about today. So pretty cool stuff. And let's dive in. So I'm actually going to get this set up properly so that we can start to teach. And I'm going to pull up an existing client and we're going to talk about everything that we see here. So I'm going to share screen. Let me do this here. Yep, that's on the right window. All right. So this is a client account. And this client is actually a lead generation client. Um, so when you look at the design request, this is something that we track specifically for this client. Reason being is that we found um, pretty much all like above 90% <clears throat> of the actions taken on the site that result in an actual sale come from this thing called the design request. So they sell um, a very very specific kind of high ticket item, usually about fifteen to twenty thousand dollars is the average order value, but it's done by lead generation, not e-commerce, because people usually don't swipe their credit card on a website for twenty grand. Um, so makes sense. But what I wanted to to look at is the last three months. So this is January twenty eighth compared to October, well January twenty eighth to yesterday compared to October thirtieth through January twenty seventh, and we're gonna notice a few things. You see the organic search here. This is rising. 84% of more organic search. And we see that our design request has increased 92%. Now we're actually getting into the busy season of this particular client. And so we're scaling. 
So that's why you see 55% more new users, 60% more design requests. Everything's hunky dory. Everything's looking good. But this organic search, typically, you're going to say, well, this is people who don't know about my brand. They're searching for ideas. They're searching for questions or sorry, answers to their questions or going into Google and asking very specific topics. And a traditional SEO strategy is to develop blogs to help answer those questions to introduce yourself for free to a user. Very simple strategy, you know, standard stuff for last decade, at least actually 20 years. If you've been in the SEO game that long, at least <clears throat> pretty much as old as Google. So when you're looking at the organic channel, the Google search console is actually going to give you the search terms, the impressions, the average click through rate and the average position of the search terms that are popping up here. And then everything else, all the other side of, okay, now what actually happened with those people is going to be all of the metrics here. This metric is going to tell you after they searched and after they clicked, not the impressions, you can't find impressions here organic, but after they searched and after they clicked, then this is what happened with that organic traffic. Now, there's going to be some different variations of this. And what I mean by that is some clients have 95% of all the organic traffic be their brand or product term. Some clients, it's a mix of both. And other clients, it's not a whole lot of brand. It is actually you know about 80% cold. Your actions on Google specifically to the brand campaign will dictate what is going to happen in the organic channel if you're looking at analytics and even GA4. GA4 is not a click-based network. It's a statistical modeling network. It's not actual. It's not real. It doesn't mean person clicked and then went to the site. Like that's that's what UA does. UA is very literal. We know we had, you know, 154 users that are a basically this is fake. Um, this sessions here is real, but basically these users did this. Like that's very, very consistent. Now, all of these people overlap in all these channels from a click perspective as well. But this is going to be very simple. GA4 means it's a it's a modeling. They're going to miss some things. That's why you have a more attributed to direct or even unattributed. But as this moves forward into GA4 here in the next few months, there's still there's still the same model, the same strategy or the, the same effect taking place. And what I like to use GA4 is with a few things. First is going to measure kind of return traffic or how much maybe you should put into a specific brand term. So if I compare the last three months to the previous period, I can see that my impressions went from 5.5 million to 8.5 million. This is organically. This is not ads. This is organically, which means people just going to Google and searching. Do they click on an ad? Do they click on organic? Doesn't matter. That's not this part. This part here is just going to be how many people searched. Now the total clicks, this is a clicks on your organic listing, not your ad. But this is also your images, which is interesting. If you actually have an image that pops up at the top half of Google and it's you also have a listing, let's say halfway down, for example, your average position might look better because you have a number one spot in an image and a number five spot in the search. Those two combined, depending upon the impressions, will give you an average position for the search term. So know that this is not just organic, it's also image based as well. So that's going to be how we kind of measure and how we think about this. If you have impressions increasing and click the rate increasing, you're going to have more clicks. Makes sense. Now, the average position is something that we watch over time because it's going to come in later. So give me the first one here, for example. <clears throat> this is the brand name of the client. Now, what we can see is that over the last three months, the brand name has went from 8,800 to 1,300. So there's 4,300 more impressions. And there's 5, 000, or 546 more clicks. Now, in the last three months, what we can see here, for example, if I look at that client's actual brand terms, which is this campaign right here, we can see that I've only spent 6% more. Good. So because I'm not scaling up my brand, which is what I, I don't want to do, I want to scale everything else besides the brand. I'm going to be putting more into non-brand DSA. I'm going to be putting more, I'm going to put majority of my budget in YouTube, but I haven't spent more in my brand. Now, what that means is that when I look at the my brand term here, my click-through rate actually stayed about the same within 1.8% of each other. 
I'll share with you a different example, and it's going to take me a minute to pull it up. But I want to share this one first is where if you start to scale top of funnel, like let's say your YouTube example, where I'm spending $160,000 a quarter, basically on branded you know, awareness, we're seeing this start to increase a lot. That is a good increase in your brand name. If I spent more on brand, my clicks would decrease. I could actually earn 4,300 more impressions, but a hundred less clicks if you push that into the brand. So for the scenario here, for example, in analytics, if I started spending more and more and more on brand and my brand terms are primarily what's showing up as search console, you're going to be spending more in ads and your organic search could go down. Typically what we tell clients and typically what we all understand is, well, if I spend more on top of funnel, my brand awareness is going to generate more organic traffic. True. If you're not spending enough inside of your brand, if you match your brand spend with the increase in your top of funnel awareness, your organic channel may actually be static. <clears throat> I'll share with you an example of what that looks like. But this is something to think about where we may have an increase in our organic search and an increase in our design requests here as my conversion action. Great. But why? Well, we do have brand search coming in more often. Good. Is that top, from top of funnel efforts? Yes. That's actually my second most clicked item here in search console. So when I sort of descending by clicks, this is actually a fairly large portion of those conversions. You could imagine that the conversion rate on your branded terms is much higher than your non-branded. So is that typically what's happening here? Yes, we are getting a lot more primarily off of branded terms. But if I start spending more in brand, we may actually see this start to level off, but my conversions are going to dip hard because the conversion rate on my second most popular item is not converting as much in this channel. It's going to start to convert up here inside of my paid search, which is also one of the reasons why your paid search increases by 90% more users, but you don't get enough credit. Why? Well, those people are coming back as these people here inside the brand and they're not clicking your brand ad more often because you haven't increased your brand spend. So they're coming in organically. <clears throat> when you're talking about the differences between, or when you're talking about Mer, this all kind of blends together, which is why I like Mer. It's, it's, a, it's a culmination of all your efforts. But when you're talking about individual channel performance, I know that there's been many times out there and we've all been we've all been susceptible to this where you'll tell the client, I'm going to spend more in in Google and we're going to start to see those people come back in Google ads and in direct and in organic and in email. But if you also scale your brand name, organic doesn't increase and that's misinterpreted by the client because typically. Typically, almost 90 percent of the time or more. Clients think organic traffic isn't brand. That's that's very, very typical of, of a client. So that's something that we need to kind of, we need a break. We need to talk about that differently. I'm going to pull up a, a slight different client here, for example. This is of a client that has a lot of brand. So what's interesting here <clears throat> is this three-month average, I scaled brand a lot. It's actually my second largest spender inside of Google ads. So when we look at the brand name here, and what you can see is this is all, you know, these are all brand terms. Now, is that person's organic traffic doing better? No, we have a large increase in people searching. The impression difference of just the main brand name went up 156,000 more searches. My clicks reduced by 20,000 in three months. Why did my click the rate go from 15 to 8.5 on my brand? I started spending on my brand name more. I have a performance max with a brand campaign in it. I have a brand search with branded terms in it. I have two campaigns. I'm spending a lot because I also have 25 other top of funnel campaigns or direct response non-brand campaigns. So now <clears throat> we see, uh-oh, what's going on here? Well, if we look up at the top here, we can see that we went from 6.3 million up to 7.4 million. There's 1.1 ish million more people searching for what my branded terms, but my organic traffic's doing worse. I lost 25 or no, I lost almost 30,000 clicks. John, you said if we spend more in Google, we should have some return organic presence. That is true. Yes, that's absolutely true. I can prove that by here. Why? Because this only measures who went to Google and who typed in the brand name. But because I own the shopping and I own the first part of search, or sorry, the first part of search in my brand, I have three competitors underneath me. And then my first organic presence is shopping, ad, 
three more ads and then my first organic listing. Well, that's fifth positions down. Actually, almost six. It's like first shopping. Then you have four ads and then the organic. That's the sixth position. That's halfway down the page. <clears throat> so I can prove that with the amount of money that we're spending on Facebook, with the amount of money that we're actually putting into YouTube, with the amount of new traffic that's coming in that didn't know about us, it's natural to see that the pre previous three months has 1.1 more million people searching for us. That's good. But we earn less in the organic in the organic channel. What that means is that my analytics is going to say, uh-oh, organic traffic is going down. It sends the wrong signal to the client. Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, you said that if we spend more, we're going to get more organic traffic. We did. It just didn't come through that channel. We measure brand awareness and lift based on market demand and activity. Do you want to pay for that traffic? Well, then that means that it's either going to go to you. So it's going to go to organic or it's going to come into paid. So two, two examples as to how that's going to be, how that works. So I want to take a second to just have everyone weigh in on the comments. Um, from, you know, anybody here, cause I don't want to kind of bogart the whole thing. <laughs> No, it all makes sense. I mean, it kind of goes into the whole thing about, you know, trying to find the balance between like, okay, do we have competitors in the, you know, marketplace? Do we have to bid against them? And then you can still track overall brand lift versus having to rely on, hey, how much did our brand go up in Google? Hey, how much did our brand go up in organic? Um, it's kind of a good, like, best of both worlds way to just look at it holistically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also goes to how well is does your does your website rank organically? And are you actually optimizing for it? The two clients I have here, one... <clears throat> spends nothing in SEO, I mean, which is why 90% of their organic clicks are coming from branded terms. Then I have one client that has a, been living and dying almost by SEO for years. And so, yeah, we do see brand awareness increasing, but it's not the majority of that traffic. Um, hey, everyone, another brainwash from John. Love it. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. I would wash your brain to think like me. Um, yeah, so that's that's exactly right. It's, it's, it's not as black and white as what clients or even advertisers kind of think it is organic traffic is is simply traffic that didn't click on an ad or come back directly during that time is there, are they new yes are they returning yes are they existing customers yes are they googling your brand name yep are they googling non-brand terms also yes everything is true so as everything is true you're not going to be defining it Two clients, for example, both spending over 100 grand a month on ads in just Google. <clears throat> huge differences, huge differences. One, 1 million more users, 25,000 less clicks. One, 3 million more impressions, a doubling of their clicks. It's completely up to how much organic traffic that's non brand that's in that mix. And are you buying the brand traffic in a different channel, which is just Google ads? So let's talk about that is, is a correlation. Um, there's going to be that, that correlation between those two, those two factors. So if you're starting to spend more inside of all areas in Google ads, specifically, you're running more YouTube, you're running more DSA, you're running pure broad, you're running whatever it is. It doesn't matter. But if you're also scaling the brand, you're stealing, not really, but you're stealing your organic traffic back. You may be the one that caused it. Great. Now you're paying for it. Okay. How much do we want to pay for it though? That's the part that always, you know, everyone asks, how much do I spend on brand? You can see how far we've come at just one of the small areas before we could dictate how much we spend on brand. On brand. But Murr will also dictate that. But how do you how do you know? Like, yeah, I know Murr is gonna dictate that. And I understand that if my overall is healthy, but could it be healthier? Could it be better? How do I optimize based on that, Mer? Well, something to think about is how much is it costing you in addition to scoop up that that client? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share screen here again, and I want to share with you a how competitive we need to be. And I have a couple examples, but I'll share with you one more extreme example and one really extreme on the other side. What I mean by that is is you know, on the other side of the spectrum, is it is it is it appropriate to even spend on brand? So in this brand campaign, since January, I spent 46,000. I have 883 conversions, which is a sizable amount, you know, because this 46,000 is only out of 400K. So it's 10% of my spend. 
but I have 900 out of the 4,200 uh, conversions. So we're talking like 20%. So now when we're looking, or like 22%, but when we're looking at the CPA, it's still fairly high, $52. My discovery remarketing is cheaper at $44 cost per lead. Even my non-brand, what the, this other campaign here is cheaper than my brand by a, almost a dollar. So why spend $52 on that brand? Well, this is, turns into the media mix. Hey, Dave, sorry you're late. You're you're tardy, and you now have to stay in for recess because you showed up late. So that's your punishment, Dave. Sorry, it's just I don't make the rules. It's just how it goes. All right. <clears throat> so when we're looking at fifty-two dollar cost per lead, this is using the data-driven model. Data-driven is going to reattribute those conversions. That's why we're seeing those split conversions here. One factor is this: since this is fifty-two dollar cost per acquisition. Do I want to spend more than 10% on it? Nope, not really. I don't because this is my this is my insurance policy. But I'm also tacking this on to my, my lead cost. When you pay for that brand, you're paying for the lead cost. I already know that I'm not capturing all of my traffic because, well, my click share is low, but also I'm seeing it come through here. I'm also seeing a good brand lift and I'm seeing, hey, I got 546 people that I didn't have to pay for. 30% conversion rates, I save myself a few thousand dollars. Easy. Now, would I if this was five dollars, would I spend more? Absolutely. I can afford to tack on five dollars additionally because right now my global cost is ninety-four dollars. What's five dollars extra? And I spent eighty-nine dollars warming them up. But if it's five dollars making ninety-four, but I capture 25-30% more of my traffic that I've generated, great. Do I need to spend that though? I don't know. What's one area to look? Well, if you hop into the brand campaign and go into your auction insights, who's bidding against you and where? So we have one competitor that is very aggressive. They're actually showing up on impression share a little bit more for us. The overlap rate, we're a little bit more, uh, sorry, the overlap rate is 26%. So 26% of the time, they beat me by 4% at the top and they beat me by 4% at being number one. They're bidding very, very high. So do I need to spend it? Yes. Do I need to spend a lot more than I than this? No. I'm going to hit a point of diminishing returns and I'm going to start to tack on at double the cost per lead to scoop up maybe 10%. Well, why, why, is, why do you say that? Well, look at it mathematically from an intent perspective. We can't measure the loss of who we're going to lose to our competitors. We just can't. We can't measure that. But I know that if I spend double based on testing or based on incremental increases, if I spend 25% more, do I get 25% more leads? Yes. Do I see 25% less leads in my organic? No. What that is, is scooping those traffic back up from those other users. However, the global cost per acquired first time customer that's coming in from the brand is exponentially higher because I'm stealing them back from my competitor, but at a cost 2x higher than it would be to go get a brand new lead. So would you spend double to not lose it? No. I had a hundred dollars and it cost really a 50. I wouldn't spend a hundred on a brand. I spend two fifties. So you're looking at what is the, what is the point of diminishing returns? Because I can't measure the loss. I know that the loss of those users going to our competitors is less than the cost it would take to get someone else new. So it's a very simple mathematical equation. This is very, very competitive. Now I'm going to share with you another example though. We already know, and we already know that the organic traffic, when they come through, they will convert. Because I see that my my branded traffic inside of Google Search Console has increased exponentially, and my or and my organic channel has more leads. Sorry, I have to let my dog out real quick. <laughs> Intermission. Yeah, I feel like with um with brand in general too, like it's one of those things where you can kind of debate between, you know, if you want to have a different channel as well, because search can be maybe really expensive, but then you can go into like, for example, YouTube remarketing, display remarketing, like John just showed, discovery remarketing, and say, oh, I can actually capture these leads a lot more, you know, cost effect based based off of what the medium is. Um, I've heard strategies too where people will say, oh, like we know that users will come after us. So we'll like bump our bids to be like second position, let our competitors just pay, you know, all this money for it and just slowly increase the bids, make the competitors essentially try to pay for first. And they just essentially are able to still scrape in exactly what they want. And the competitors trying to bid and outbid them, they're losing. Yeah, we see a lot when we run competitor campaigns, like we never bid for number one. It's going to be 10 times more than number two, obviously. But then <clears throat> it, you scoop up all the other traffic that that's not good. Um, 
you know, you have a person that sells furniture and you run a competitive ad and now you're getting people calls like, where's my couch? My couch is broken. And it showed up with like, I don't know who you are. And now you're paying for other person's spam or other person's complaints, um, which is a great strategy. Yeah. Just make the person bid high. Like it's great. And they're not going to run long. They're going to get upset and, and, and stop bidding so much. That's um, why you upload conversions. Bingo. That's actually what we did in here too. Um, but you know, what's funny is that was, that's a, that's a fun segue real quick. Um, when we upload our conversions and you look at the conversion action, I know my brand campaign, I have a crazy, uh, conversion rate between 861, uh, design tool submissions and 174 sales. That's really good. Now, what ratio is that? Has anybody got a calculator? What is, what percentage of 861 is 174? Awkward silence. I know, right? We're all so bad at math, and we were really <laughs> so <laughs> funny. Right. <laughs> what were the we numbers can, you said? Uh, what percentage of eight sixty one is one seventy four? Oh, roughly like twenty percent. All right, so let's, let's call it twenty percent, everybody. Um, we all failed high school, by the way. That's why we do Google Ads. Um, so now it's, let's say twenty percent. Now, if I go into like a non-brand DSA, for example. And I look at the search terms and I overlay the same thing. You can see this is scaling up here really nice, nice and well. If I look at this non-brand keyword here and I look uh, and I actually have to go back uh, to here because we haven't uploaded this last two weeks. But if I look at um, out of 285 and I have 57, so that's fairly not not identical, but it's a non-brand keyword is actually pretty good. We have, you know, 65 and 14. That's 25% ish. We have um, this one here, uh, which was 18 and four. So we see the non-brand is almost converting into good quality sales as the brand is. So now it's a pure CPA play. But the problem is the overlap rate between the non-brand and the brand is the same. People like Google non-brand, well then Google brand. You're going to tack on the double cost of a you know, DSA CPA of 93 plus spend another 50 on for an overlap rate of a lot of people. That's not good. So you got, that's why Mer counts. So that one was pretty easy. So Dave, <laughs> shut up, Dave. Why didn't you chat it then? Huh? Yeah, that's right. You do Google ads like us. All right. <laughs> um, so let's talk about the, uh, the other extreme example that I'd like to share. Um, this is one where you're going to see amazing results inside of the, um, inside of the, the account. So hop over to another MCC. Sorry about this. All right, cool. So January till April 13th. Sure. Whatever. We'll just use that, that time period. I'll just go last week. So this brand campaign here spent $222 and made 50,000 easy. Like I have a seven cent cost per click and my convert, my cost per conversion is only 49 cents. Real, real, real simple. Do you want to spend more? Why? I mean, if you look at the auction insights, who's bidding against me? I have the first and second listing. I don't have to spend more. It's, it, there's never been a point in time. There has never been a point in time that anybody here can honestly say, you know what? I searched for something that I wanted from the brand name and I saw two listings. So I left. <laughs> Doesn't happen. As long as you're high up on the page, number one, and you're showing up for where people are looking for, don't overspend there. That that ROAS on that campaign is like 20,000%. But I'm not fluffing my numbers by dumping in a whole bunch of money in there. I'm spending $200 like a quarter on my brand name. I don't need to spend more. So it's really, really, really simple. So my I the organic traffic that comes into that client, actually, let me actually just see if I have access to it in this login so not everyone's waiting. Um well, in theory too, John, I mean, you could spend like, you know, a dollar a day and just track overall competitors inside of the brand campaign and then just let it run and go off organic if your organic's really good. Yeah. Versus having to like, you know, pump it and see where it goes. You can just leave it on. And then if a competitor is bidding on it, you track it, up the bids and then beat them out and then trim them back down when the competitor leaves. Yeah. There's actually a company out there that I met that does exactly that autonomously. Um, oh, here we go. Uh, so... I'm spending, you know, two hundred dollars a month or a quarter on brand, and we can see the last twenty-eight day clicks. You know, three hundred five more impressions, one hundred forty-four more clicks. Good. I could have, I could have downed that and took credit all for myself. And yeah, there's going to be people searching here because of me, but Mer dictates better. 
I don't need to make myself look good if the client's winning based on myrrh and I'm primarily the only one marketing for them. So it's brand, 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 except for like that one. I have no idea what that is, but that's all brand. Um, so that's what's kind of interesting is you're, you're making a choice. It's all you're doing. You're really just saying, hey, how much do I want to attribute to myself? And then you have to also dictate is, are you the one generating that? And what are you willing to pay for that? But if you try to scale it, you'll make yourself look better, but you'll eat into the net profit, which means your MER is going to be bad. But you're also going to not really you know, be around much longer if, if that's your strategy. Um, so that's that's why I think this is kind of an important important topic to discuss, where is organic traffic organic to your client? Or sorry, is organic traffic non-brand to your client? Demystify that. Hop into search consoles. Show these trends to your clients. We started YouTube. See all the more people searching for you? I'm not just spending to spend on the brand campaign. You see the demand coming in. If you look at instead of Google ads, what is the brand lift based on the recognition of your brand? You're wrong. You're you're unless you're spending 100% to capture every single person search for the brand name. All you're doing is showing them what you paid for in eligibility. If you buy $100 a day worth of brand traffic, your impressions stay the same. The impressions can go from 10,000 to 168 billion, but you're still going to buy the same $100 worth of brand. It might perform a little bit better, but you can't show brand lift. You'd have to spend more to show brand lift. And if you spend more in brand and your merch stays the same, congratulations, you have brand lift. You're just now capturing it in a different channel. But the intent, the demand is going to be found in search console, not in Google ads, because your search console is going to say, Here's all the people search for your brand name. Well, where did they click? Doesn't matter. Here's where everyone searched for your brand name. That's what's important. That measures brand lift. TikTok, YouTube, Snapchat, Facebook, Instagram, Google will all play a factor. That's why we're cohesively with other teams, not you versus them. You guys will both lose. Well, what, I mean, you'll both win and lose based on the week, but you're not actually solving the client's problem. So you're both bad marketers. So when we're looking at the search console, that's where you're going to be able to actually identify lift. And if you don't go into search console, go into search console, poke around. You're just going to open your eyes. You'll say, wow, this is, this is, I started doing more top of funnel and there's more brand coming in. I started doing top of funnel. What's the row as on display? Oh, it's terrible. I, I made an extra hundred million dollars in organic. But that wasn't me, right? It's all non-brand. No, just demystify that. Look into it, dig in deep. These are all simply just categories of, people. That's it. It's just channels. That's all we're measuring here. We're finding the correlations. <clears throat> I want to share with you how to, how to turn this around though, H how to start maybe expanding. So that now we've, 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 we've used Google search console to identify where your return brand and your brand lift and, and how you may accidentally, you know, kill the organic channel by scaling Google ads efficiently, if you're just spending more in brand evenly with the increase in the brand campaigns, or sorry, evenly with the non-brand campaigns. But John, I also want to yeah, make yeah. a quick point too on that is if you have a really aggressive marketing strategy, that could scoop up the traffic thing come organically or go into brand as well too. So that's just something to also take into account. It's funny because he even didn't have a reverse effect. You know, if you're doing more remarketing and you're reminding people, hey, you should buy from here, you're like, oh, yeah. depending upon the action that they take and how much you're spending on brand, it's the same it's the same thing. I love it. The great, great, great point. You, if your remarketing click is a high click-through rate, buy buy organic. If your marketing has low click-through rate, but it's quality, hello, more organic. <laughs> it's it's simply just a measurement of how these people got to us. That's all we're measuring. Um, check this out. This is actually a really, really cool alignment because... Uh, I taught this, uh, for like an hour and a half, uh, today to internal. And now I'm kind of teaching you this, the example that I used for my team was bad. Yours is going to be a lot better here on the live. So sorry, solutions, eight employees, hopefully you're watching. Um, but the, uh, uh, I actually want to share with you a strategy as to how to leverage, um, how to leverage growth from search console inside of ads. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show a trend. And I'm going to show you what this looks like inside of the back end of oh, the front end of search console. Sorry, I'm getting the screens correlated here. Alrighty. So here's a client. This client, we've grown a lot. Um, if I just go from like October 
you can see here that we had a busy season here. We went into a lull and it's scaling back up here. Now, I've grown this client a lot since we started with them in November of 2021. It's been a great path. We started with, I'll just do like, you know, cost and conversions. We started with like 17 grand a month at 231 conversions, and now it's 128,000 a month and 1500 conversions. So same campaigns. We just, whoop, we just started scaling up hard. Now, during this time period, though, this has been a fairly static strategy. We're just getting better and better and better. Um, more ad spend, more growth, same efficiencies. But if you look in the last three months of here and you look at, let's just say the last three months of my DSA campaign, one second. there we go. My little seat popped and started clicking back. <laughs> I almost fell out of my chair. All right. If you look at the, this last three months here, watch this. We have these search terms here. If you're live, you're seeing the search terms. If you're watching this on a recording, these are all blurred out. So, so sorry, too bad. It just know that these correlate. But what you're going to see here is a comparison. I'm going to take January through yesterday, compared to the previous period. And what you're going to see is this one here, this keyword, or sorry, search term that's actually happening inside of DSA. I have gotten 58% more clicks on it. If I go into the back end, or the, sorry, if I go into search console, I don't know why I always say back end. If we go into search console, this right here, you see how we have 71,000 more impressions for this search term, but 167 less clicks. Well, how does, how does you get 71,000 more people search for you or not search for you, search for this non-brand keyword? That's a big jump, but 167 less clicks. So one of the highest impressions differences, it's actually the highest impression total at 191,000 and we earn less clicks organically. That's the keyword. Organically, we earn less clicks. Well, where'd those clicks go? They went to Google, Google ads. I bid on them and I stuck, I, there was a hundred thousand more. I took 3,400 of those click the rate of about three and a half organically. So what I did is I, I've already identified the keywords that I want to show up for. I negated everything. And that's why these conversion rates are, are all equal. And it's, it's good cost per conversion. What you can see here is that if you weren't showing up for this and you see a lot of people searching for them, test it, run it as a, a phrase. Exact. Even do a broad version of it, run it through a DSA. Start to start to try it. This is your keyword strategy. If you have organic traffic and you have good performance, go into your search console and start bidding. Why? Because you can look over here on the other side at average position and say, wow, this outdoor, oh, sorry, I almost said the keyword. Uh, this keyword here, I went, I'm at average position number four and I'm at average position number 3.7. Well, that's a great keyword. And I don't have a number one or number two placement. And there's a whole bunch of people coming in in the last three months. This keyword's rising. What if you were number one? You're number three. Remember, you have shopping as the first four, one, two, three. You are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You're eighth on the page. Good luck. But because we saw a massive imp impression increase and a decrease in clicks, it's because I bid on it and I stole my own organic traffic, put it into ads to give myself a number one position to develop $85 cost per leads on a $20,000 item. My conversion rate went up 36% after spending 20% more and getting how many more conversions? 116% more. I'm literally just looking at the traffic I would have earned and gave myself a better position on it. Now, did I lose organic traffic? Yes. Do I have a better conversion rate? Absolutely. How can you tell? Well, in analytics, my organic conversion rate's 1.7. In ads, I'm getting 4.47. Great. So I, I tripled my conversion rate from organic by paying for it. It's under my cost per acquisition. It's still cold traffic. I put a hundred and uh, I put 20% more budget, spent 36 grand on it and got 116% more leads during my busy season. Your organic traffic is telling you, here's what, are, this is your market demand. Remember keyword planner? It's like last three months is 30% higher, but they always show like a hundred search terms when there's actually a thousand because keyword planner goes exact. And yeah, that's okay. This is going to tell you, here's how many people are searching for it. Here's the increase. Here's where you are on the page. And here's your click-through rate. And you get to say, wow, I'm already showing up for it. My organic traffic does have conversions in it. And this has got to be in there somewhere. 
But if I could be number one, you have to say, well, do I spend $80,000 in six months writing blogs and buying backlinks and cross my fingers for that to change next season? Or do I just instantly turn it on tomorrow running Google ads? So hunt through your search terms in Google Search Console. It will tell you what you need to bid for based on just being a Google ads manager. I mean, you're, you're paid to identify that and, and, and bid on it and increase it and get better visibility for good quality search terms. That's why SpyFu, SEMrush, ISPNR, Keyword Planner, that's what they do. You have it built in for free, already coming to your site now. So, you know, it comes down to the opportunity cost, right? So you think they're searching for my brand. I'm actually going to get that click, but that's not the reality. That's why we have competitor campaigns. But um, if you don't want to pay $5 and you lose a sale, um, like what I want to mean is um, there, are two there are two things that we have to take into consideration. One, the brand recognition, the brand loyalty, and the industry loyalty. So let's say you you're running pizza, right? You have a Facebook campaign, you're creating demand for pizza, and you're Domino's, but I'm actually searching for Domino's, and there's Pizza Hut, and there's a value proposition like buy, buy two, uh, only pay for one, and you're losing me. Just mm -hmm. because I search for Domino's Pizza doesn't mean I have to buy Domino's Pizza. If there's a better value proposition from a competitor, you're going to lose it. Yep. Yeah, it's, it's, and you can't measure that. And that's where you dictate how much does it affect your MER. That will actually almost say, am I overspending and I'm not gaining much more? But if I reduce, how much more do I lose? Mer does help that. Um, top line also helps that too. Like I can't share the example, but that one company that we have that's publicly traded, which is why I can't share screen right now. But that company has a competitor that sells a one-to-one -one identical SKU list as our competitors because we sell the same product from the same manufacturer. And, it, and we're all map pricing. So that's what's really crazy is we have the same product for the same price for the same search term. <laughs> now, when they come back, that is going to heavily dictate who wins that customer because either listing they click on, they found exactly what they're looking for. They're not loyal to us. They want the product and it's not a manufactured product. So I'll tack on an additional $120 per the cost of a new customer because if I don't, my competitor gets that and I've taken the 100 and five you know incremental accrual spend that i've spent on new customers and thrown out the window because it didn't spend the last five to ten dollars per click so when you have people that are looking for a solution like your santa fe that's not brand recognition that's where that that's where that dictates most if you are the only one with that product all right that one client that i share with you all that spent 200 dollars to make 50 grand we don't have a competitor. No one else also makes a product like ours. Not to any, not to any large degree, or we have 4,000 SKUs. May, a person may have 10. Like we are the place to get that. I don't need to pay for that traffic. So people say like, how much money do I need to spend on brand? I, I, I anything I give you is wrong because I haven't done the research. But the other part too is when you're, when you're, if you're an agency, and I do think that we have a lot of people here that are agency owners or people that do freelance that have been in that position where a client's like, yeah, you said if I spend more on Google, my organic traffic would go up. Well, that's true. But did you pay for that organic traffic increase? Because now the organic traffic is coming in as brand because it came and searched brand recognitions up. You're capturing that, but mer dictates spend increases should stay the same. So I went from 50 grand to hundred grand. My merch should stay the same. If I'm not overspending on brand, or more decrease because it might be underspending on brand. If I spend a whole bunch of money warming these people up and they search for me and my competitor scoops up all my hard work, I spent not my incremental CAC is higher because I've spent a whole bunch of money, but not the last step. It's like saying, hey, I, 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 I increased my ad spend, but I removed a landing page. It's like, no, that's where people were converting. Don't do that. Like no one here in the right mind would do that. You wouldn't take your best converting landing page, just, but you'll take your best converting campaign and because you're not sure what's, if it's good or not. Brand is good if demand is increasing alongside with your spend. Equates to mer. Yeah, so I don't know if we have any Q and A. Has been the chat's been pretty quiet, uh, but that maybe maybe you're all asleep or maybe you're just listening attentively. So could go either way, or we might have a technical issue. I don't know, <laughs> but we got about fifteen minutes left, and so I wanted to see if we want to do any sort of Q and A on this. I'll give you all a minute. 
Um, let's see if you were to if you were to specialize in any area in Google Ads or in any vertical, where would you specialize? We'd love to get everyone's answer. For me specifically, I really like e-commerce. Um, I honestly wouldn't niche down further than that. And now I won't bogart this question. Uh, Dave says I was at recess. <laughs> Dave, here you're oh, man. Now detention. Sorry, man. I don't make the rules. Uh, so the, I would actually say e-commerce. The reason why is niching down is too volatile for you. Um, if you're saying, Hey, I want to do e-commerce, but only of dog food. Yeah. But then a big competitor comes in and now all of your clients are gone or, you know, socioeconomical changes. Um, anything that you can't just kind of pivot fast. That's where you'll, you'll, you know, see that loss. So getting good at selling stuff, you get to dictate the clients that you work with, which is now your niche, but you're good at something very specific. What else do you guys think? It's a good question. Um, I mean, I obviously see probably, I see probably the most opportunity in lead generation personally. Um, I still would probably lean more into e-commerce as like omnichannel. That's just a personal preference. But um, from like a opportunity standpoint, I see lead generation as like a massive amount because, you know, Google's always, and this is kind of my theory on it, is Google's always trying to maximize the inventory in e-commerce. You have one-to-one -one ratio of, hey, someone bought this product and they spent this much. So then we could charge more for a user because they're making, you know, profit from it. But lead generation, you could have untapped mediums where it's like, hey, like we're paying 50 bucks and we're closing like a million dollar lead. And Google has no idea about it, but you do on the back end. So, mm -hmm. And that can come down to just, you know, other agencies as well, not wanting to report the data back to Google to then find more people out there that are like that. So I, I would say personally, um, I agree with John. I like e-commerce um, just because and mine's kind of more for like the omni-channel side of things. But um, opportunity wise, I think lead generation is, is a lot bigger from Google's perspective. Mm -hmm. Yeah, lead generation, you have to rely on sales teams. And if they're bad, you're, you're fired. And yeah. I hate that part. Yeah. Everyone, everyone nods their heads. Yeah. Yeah. Joe King says, I like Lee Gen, but I also extremely hate Lee Gen. That's a video ad that I'm running right now, which is very true. Like, I love Lee Gen as long as, Lee, the, as, long as the sales teams are competent. <laughs> if you're suicidal, you like Lee Gen. Yeah. <laughs> Lee Gen is suicidal toss all the way. I, I have a client that I struggle with because our trackings are all over the place. We don't know where it's coming from, but we're struggling. The struggle is real. But I like Lee Gen if the system is there. I don't know why. Uh, I think 75% of my clients are Legion. I think my company hates me or I've done something. I don't know. But if the sales team is good, if the CRM is good, if we can have like our hand on the pulse where stuff is coming from, whether the keywords are clicking, it is incredible. Like with the, uh, the client we spoke about, the one with the... Uh, paid speaking gigs when we when everything clicked into place and when everything was in place the amount of money we were generating from simple searches was in, insane and your competitors have no idea what you're doing because it's all, all opaque to them it's just visible to you so they can't capitalize on that but again it all relies on what sort of a team you're working with with e-com it's just numbers again it's a numbers game but with legion you all depend on the like it's it's a two-way street all the way you kind of yep. also sometimes are for like resellers or drops. You know, I like something that I can create a demand for. I don't differentiate uh, lead gen or e-com, but I need something that I can create a demand for, right? It's, it's marketing. Like you have to have a unique selling proposition that I can play around, like top of funnel, uh, harvesting demand, brand, uh, display, uh, tactic with uh, other channels. So yeah, creating demand. Can I just say something? Uh, Dave says, I like lead gen. You can use automation to help solve the sales team issues. Yeah, Dave, good luck when you don't have any UTM parameters in place, when you have no idea where the leads are coming from. So you, ha you sometimes have scenarios where you deal with that. That's that's the pain, I think, the biggest pain when it comes to lead gen. Yeah, and that's, that's what's funny is like the lead generation is such a it's a black box on our side, which is kind of funny. Uh, even Joe King just said it again. Like we expect you to optimize our campaigns without any input from us, actual quote from a lead gen client. Yes. It's like, okay, so I'm going to assume you have a hundred percent close rate fair. And then the clients can be like, well, no, be like, okay, this is why I need input. Otherwise I'm going to assume that I'm amazing because you're not complaining this hour. Cool. 
you know, that's, it's, it's such a short sighted way of thinking it. It's like, here's thousands of dollars. It's like, awesome. How's it working? Nope. So that, that's a, that's a bad client. In my opinion, um, you know, it's almost like asking a sales team to sell, you know, sell items for you, but you're not going to develop anything for them. It's like, really? Like, what am I selling then? Horrible, horrible thing. Um, Jan says, I have, I hope it's Jan or Jan, Jan, I don't know. I'm sorry. J-A-N, that's your name now. Um, hey, I have a client that sells products to large companies, it has e-commerce store, but also a sales team that follows up on leads. Recently, our Google revenue dropped by 50% without any changes. That's what I'm, what I'm, that's the part that I, I have an issue with is, is it lead, is it sales team generated uh, as an issue? Like I have had the time where I had a person that stopped um, answering the phone calls because she was actually let go of the company. And so two thirds of our phone calls were being generated from that company. And now we're like, Hey, lead flows down. It's like, well, the type of lead matters um, to the sales. So you're talking about chats, you're talking about phone calls, you're talking about form fills, you're talking about actual e-commerce sales. If you have a good person, this is Pareto's 80, 20 rule, the 20% of the sales team was making 80% of the sales. And now they're no longer there. They're on vacation. Are you piping that information back into Google? Are the people on the phone saying, yes, I answered your question. Are you ready to buy? And they say, you know what? You've answered all my questions about freight and warranty and, and, and set up and instructions. I'm going to go ahead and buy it. And they say, thank you very much you know, sir, ma'am, and they click buy, but that goes to Google. There's so many ways that a, that a mix match hybrid model of sales team and e-commerce sales can go haywire that you have to check every single thing. What are all leads generated? Has the contact rate been the same? Has the, you know, you know, MQL to SQL rate stay the same? Like kind of walk step by step in your benchmarks and say, where did this fail? You have to do it for every single type of lead, but that's, that's why I don't like lead generation. You know, the old matter, the old, uh, old issue was sales says the leads suck. Marketing says the sales team suck. And now, you know, that's why importing those conversions back in is the only way to say, nope, this is exactly what happened. You know, it's basically the only way to solve for that. So if you have a client that says, I expect you to sell, then don't expect any optimization to come through because I'm just going to assume everything's perfect because I'm a good marketer. That doesn't help anybody. Um, if you go to, oh yeah, what's up? Uh, we I think we missed another question earlier than uh, Jan. Uh, it's from Dcas a little bit earlier. We sell a specific type of wedding band on manual. We come up number one and number two every time. Should we stick with manual or go to a smart bidding? We do well with Pmax. How are you man manual on Pmax? I think I'm kind of my question. Uh, I, I guess I'm saying shopping. I'm guessing. Is what's that? I'm assuming it's standard shopping compared to Pmax, but I'm not sure because, yeah, normally the one would only serve. I guess I when I say we do well in Pmax, it means that a non-feed Pmax. But also my question would be, Decaz, do you show up a lot of brand in that non-feed non -feed Pmax? Because if that is the case, it might be coming from standard shopping. If so, don't change it. My opinion. If you let Google decide who's going to show up for your shopping, what you did is you take in all of your brand inbound search and say, hey, you know what? Shopping non-brand was doing good. What about shopping brand? Better numbers slower death <laughs> i went dark there all right um uh john if you go to e-commerce if if you go into e-commerce you will compete with john and you will never win <laughs> thanks dave you're just trying to get out of detention are you uh, <laughs> uh all right i don't want to give it too much i don't want to give too much info uh, wait a minute. I'm sitting here giving you all my trade secrets and you won't give me some information in the comments, man. I'm, I'm hurt. Uh, so I will see what uh, you'd look like af at first if this happened to you, but, uh, but the problem doesn't seem to be on the site. Oh, I don't know if you're talking to me. Anyway, no, this is regarding, I'm sorry. I don't know. I don't know what this means. This was the follow up to the question, the, about the, uh, say as Google says, uh, revenue dropped by 50%. I think this is the follow up comment to that. Yeah, I'm just like, I don't want to give too much info. So I see, oh, so I see what you'd look at first if this happened to you. Oh, I see, but problem doesn't seem to be on the site. I see. If they don't have a CRM tool, by the way, I don't do business with them. If we're doing any sort of lead generation and e-commerce or anything that has to do with an offline conversion and you don't have a CRM tool and we haven't linked it, haven't tracked it, and have a set of reports, I can't work with you. Um, that's That's my opinion. Like if it's like, hey, we sent you 15 leads the client remembers three because they were good. He missed four, doesn't remember five. Like it's just, it's, it's so all over the board. That's not going to be reliable. Um, so have to have to have it, get a CRM tool. Um, see, 
I like lead gen. You can use automation to help solve the sales team issues. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, I have a whole team that sells a very 4,600 uh, return on investment every year. Amazing. Like spend hundred grand, make like 4.6 million. It's unbelievable. We set up full $2,800 per month HubSpot. Every email, every notification, round robin, a three day wait, no sales activity, another three, another round robin. I mean, it's crazy, 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 crazy good. Um, we have a, still a lot of sales team issues. Um, like people that were like working a lead and then the people were actually like trying to contact them back through the form and they just didn't get a notification. So they just ignored it. Like it's just ugh, nightmare stuff. So when I say a good sales team, I mean competent. Um, we expect you to, oh yeah, that's right here. Um, hard to beat lazy clients though. <laughs> that's right. Uh, says, Jan says, we, well, we track both sales team and Google revenue sales revenue dropped. So sales team revenue dropped a bit, but not as much as Google revenue, which comes directly through e-commerce store. So this has nothing to do with the sales team. Then I'm, then what I'm saying, so that that's going to be a whole, whole different issue. Unless there's phone calls that those people then go and check out. That's, that's the only thing I would say, if that's something you haven't looked into, or we just have a, we have a, an issue with the, the structure and setup, or maybe something went out of stock. Um, whole bunch of stuff. Oh, DK says we're not on man. We're, we are not manual on PMAX. Okay. That's what I'm thinking is yet a, uh, yeah, thanks guys. Okay. So he was said that they actually had a, probably a, a non fee PMAX, which is good, but if it's too much brand again, that's kind of what this whole thing was about. Um, do you see actually, since you've been running standard shopping, did you see your brand recognition go up? Because more people are going to return search. PMAX is going to take credit for that. Are you overspending for that? Perhaps, um, you might have better overall mer if you actually change that into a manual uh, CPC campaign on, on inbound search. Or you may completely fail because now your remarketing campaigns that are using display are not keeping the top of mind so much. Whole bunch of stuff you could test. Um, yeah, I don't think the problem is on the sales team side. Okay. Yeah, that'd be something that um, I don't know if we'll be able to fix here for you, but that'd be... I definitely look in, you know, just do your standard oper operations. My first thing is check your product performance by volume. Typically, one of the ways that people don't necessarily look, and this might be a brain transfer next week. Well, we should do that. You could actually look at month over month, week over week, year over year. If you have, let's say, 100 SKUs and it's in shopping, PMAX, doesn't matter. If you're looking at 100 SKUs, do the time when it was good versus the time that it was bad. So last three weeks compared to previous three weeks, whatever it is. And then sort descending by cost. And then also put your conversion column next to it. A lot of times I've seen SKUs change that still spend the same amount globally, but the product that was selling is earning less cost and the product that is not selling started to earn more cost. This is going to be heavily dictated by your structured setup. If all of a sudden a Facebook campaign went live and is driving a whole bunch of crappy traffic to the site, your PMAX is auto remarketing to it for the products that they were interested in because people wanted to sell this WYSIWYG that wasn't going to work. Your PMAX campaigns are going to be affected whole bunch of stuff that I can't help you here now, but start to look at just what changed in terms of e-commerce. If it is an e-commerce um, campaign like PMAX. Uh, another question specifically for e-commerce stores. All right, here we go. Uh, I have about one minute left everyone. So sorry. How much of total sales in percentage terms do you normally see sold through Google? If the client is also heavily advertising on Facebook, I have one client that is 80% and we spend, $2 million a month on it. And I have another client that's like 20%, but my, my baseline, it should be above 20% sales coming from Google. If you're below that, you have opportunity to increase, but only if it's cold. Um, what do you guys say? Depends on the industry. Like if it's a uh, small, a like short uh, sales cycle, like let's say it's clothing. I see something, I see a red t-shirt. I like it. I go and buy it. There's not much, uh, steps for me to take but let's say i'm looking out for a crm tool i saw something on youtube now i have to uh, make some searches like what's the best tool what's the best comparison alternative for that and it's a longer sales cycle in those cases you'll see google a lot more yeah and it, it's really going to be up to the the proper structure for the account that kind of goes off last week's so like if you have a really instagramable company don't force google um, exactly. but if you have a ton of really good direct response inbound my opinion is that might be a great opportunity for Facebook, actually. Like if you're at Google ads and you're spending 100% of your ad spend on Google and you haven't tested Facebook, but people are just searching and buying for it. It's like you can max that out 
but you're going to hit a point of diminishing returns that then can be picked up by Facebook and ran if it's a direct responsible type of product, which usually means works well on Google. I have to go, everyone. I have to join another meeting, but I really appreciate it, everyone. 